Hi guys, this is Ms. Sim, and today we're going to be learning about Bridget Riley and understanding the principles of design. Bridget Riley, she was born April 24th, 1931 in West Norwood, London, England. She is the ripe old age of 89. She's still alive. She's known for drawing and painting and her style of art is OP art. Her work can also be considered pop art and even abstract. It's very different from the other stuff that we've done and I'm really excited to show you guys what we're going to be doing today. And of course, this is her with some of her artwork behind her. Optical illusion art. OP art, short for optical art, is a style of visual art that uses optical illusions. The artwork may look as if it has movement, hidden images, vibrating or vibration, pattern, swelling, or warping. So if you've ever seen a picture and it looked like it was moving and you know it wasn't moving, so that can be considered optical illusion art. And the principle of designs that we're going to be using and focusing in our project today are balance, pattern, rhythm, and motion. Balance, we can consider it if it is it reflective, is there symmetry, is it asymmetrical, pattern, is there repetition? So are we doing something over and over again? And movement, is there a sense of motion? And hopefully with this project that we're going to see in just a second, we'll have all of that. It also looks like it's moving. There is repetition. There is motion. It looks like there are hills and valleys and everything like that. So... I hope we have tons of fun doing this project. And remember, be creative. Don't be scared to mess up because we can't really mess up in art. There's never mistakes, just happy little accidents. I'm going to start this off by saying that you do not have to do this part. I'm just making a small box. It makes it easier for me. If you guys want to, you can. Makes it easier to section some stuff off. So if you want to, draw a size. Any size box, mine's about the size of my palm. And after you draw your box, you don't want to cut it. Or any size piece of paper, you can even do this in a rectangle. It doesn't have to be perfect. I am not using any rulers. Cut it into fours. And then we're gonna cut it again. I'm gonna try to do it in the middle. So we're gonna try to bring our sections off squares to the middle. So I'm just making triangles. So I'm gonna do that for all of my squares. You can try to draw a straight line if you have a ruler through the middle, but I don't have a ruler. So I'm going to just try my best. Doesn't have to be perfect, doesn't have to be too even. That's a starting point. We start off with a square, cut our squares into four squares, and then we're doing triangles. And this is where it starts getting difficult. But we're good at first doing, you can make them as big as you want or as little as you want. These ones I make, might make a little bit bigger. I'm gonna start with a little C shape. Okay, so this is where this gets difficult where I have an outward going C shape, the next one will be inward going. So this one's out, this one is in. The next one is out, this one is in. The next one is out, that means this one is in. Out, in. And that's just the pattern. And that's how it's going to be for all of this. So if this one's going to be out, my legs line on this will also be out. Out, this one is in, this one will also be in. And we wanna make sure that we're connecting the route. So this one's out, out, this one's in, in, this one's out, out. And do you guys see how I'm connecting them at each place. That one is in. This one is out. This one is in. There you go. 
And this probably won't be my last layer. So this one was out. This one's out. This one is in. So this is in. Out. In. And you don't have to worry about them being too even. Or too perfect. That's what makes this fun. See? So if we just look at this one, they're all face, all of my lines are facing, going out this way. Same thing for this one. So that's the easy way to remember how to do this as well. There, that looks like I'm done with this drawing. Next is coloring. And before you color, you can color these any color. So I am going to use black, but you guys can use crowns. And after this, I'll show you guys one using color. But for coloring, we do need to have a set pattern. So this is the part where that we do need to pay attention to and make sure that we, to make sure that we label it before we start. So if this part is going to be black, this will be white. Black, white, black, white. Oh, black, sorry. So every other one will be black. So if this one's black, this is white. That means this is black. White, black, white, black, white, black. So this one's white, that means this one is black. White, black, white, black, white, black. That one's white. This one is black, that is white. So that means this one's black. This is white. This is black, that's white. This one is black, and this one is black. So I guess we'll see me color this here in just a second. So when you're done, this is what they should look like. So this is one of them that I did, a little bit bigger one, and this is them on all my paper. Once again, like I said, you could do it really big. You could do it as big as your paper if you want to, but you don't have to. This is the one that I colored. So if you wanted to, you could color, like how we colored this one, or even you could use two colors or as many colors as you want, just as in the pattern. So I hope you guys had fun doing this one. Bye. So I'll see you guys next week.